greetings. So, uh, after a lot of pain, I finally managed to fix this, um, the issue where weapons, for example, take this one, would clip into terrain. Um, so you can see how, like, I don't know how to describe this. It's like, it's not drawn, um... I, I can't use words. Point is, I managed to fix this issue um, after a lot of, of, of pain, um, and it still interacts nicely with light and everything. Uh, and by the way, the models, this model used I just found on Sketchfab for testing. I don't own it, um, but the code, the code, it I did, I did. So okay. Um, you can also do FOV 50 and like stuff that you can change the view model FOV uh, as well without changing your FOV. So it's kind of like TF2 or Source Games. Uh, I think that 90 looks the best. Um, anyway, so today I'm just going to show how to do this because I thought it was very very painful to figure out and I don't want anyone else to have to go through the same trouble uh, this game that I'm making is closed source but I'll include the snippets that make this part work uh, so that you guys can use it um, anyway so It's basically right here. It's this. So how does this work? Um, basically, there's a uh, there's a shader that I found online, but that didn't work. So I had to fix by just playing around with it until it worked. And so here's the shader. Um, so. Okay, hang on. So this shader right here does two things. The first thing that it does is you have a variable called FOV, and it uses this to uh, change the view model FOV. So this part you can ignore if you don't. You can remove like this whole this part if you don't want. Um, your uh, weapon to have a different FOV than your camera. Um, but this can help prevent, like, stretching. The second part here is what makes it draw on top of everything. And basically, um, what I wanted to do was when a weapon is being held, like this, for example, uh, here we have a, a placeholder camera to show what it would look like. This weapon is being drawn here. Uh, but if I wanted to add the uh, this view model shader, I would have to completely override the stuff, the shader properties that make this weapon look like this weapon. So I can't like augment a shader by adding these things. So what I had to do was step one is convert is uh d go like click on here and click on the thing underneath here that says uh, convert to shader uh, material from a standard material and it'll automatically generate this um yeah automatically converted and this defines how the shader looks but now we want to add the parts of the view model shader that will make it behave the way we want to to this shader. If we use next pass, next pass is not is if anyone tells you to use next pass they're uninformed and not giving it's just not correct because if we use next pass, we can put next pass here, we can actually uh, try it. Um, we can make a shader material and then put the shader on next pass. So what's the issue here? Obviously, I haven't applied it to the little pump part of the shotgun, but the issue here is that it's rendering it twice. 
Um, and the next pass doesn't inherit the stuff that the other one had. So we can, you can see how like we can change um, the FOV. And if we look at, at this thing right here, oops, you can see how the, the FOV uh, has an effect on, on, this, uh, on this view model. So we, we can't just do that. We can't use next pass. So what else can we do? Um, basically, we want to open up this shader file and add this line in the vertex function of this shader file and add this line to the vertex, uh, to the fragment function of this shader file. And then we want to add, um, we also want to put this, uh, this, this variable so that we can change it later on. The stupidly hacky, dumb way that I managed to do this was by um, in the hand thing that handles like weapons being spawned and the view model. I created this function called search and apply view model shader code to all pre existing shaders in tree. And it takes a node called current. So, what this does is um, say I give it a node called current. In this case, this would be the weapon, so this would be this node. For all of its children, it's going to call this function again. So basically, this simple recursion means that it'll access every single tree. Every, it'll access every single node in the tree of shotgun. And if it ever finds a mesh instance 3D, so these two, it will iterate through all the surfaces because they can have diff they can have multiple surfaces. This one only has one because it's an actually good model that was exported nicely. Um, so this one only has one. So then we set the we set a temporary um, a temporary variable to the the uh, what is it called the this material. So temp is now this material. So we can use all of the methods from the material class. And then um, we look to see if the material is a shader material right here. If it is, we can actually edit the shader code. And this like just parse, this like literally just takes the string, uh, figures out if it's already in there. And if it isn't, insert it where it finds the um <laughs> insert it where it would find like the void vertex function and inserts it after that and puts the the lines of code manually so this is this looks really really stupid and then after it's all done if a change was detected it'll actually set the code and this set code function will recompile the shader so this seems really stupid but it's the only way to make this work. Um, because what you could also do is you could, uh, obviously you should turn off the it casting shadows because that can look pretty weird. But the, um, the reason why, <coughs> uh, and so like every time we switch a weapon, we would apply this and then uh, do a thing called search and set view model FOV to all shaders and tree. Uh, this method right here called set view model FOV, basically it literally just, uh, does the same like recursive, recursive thing to access every, every one of these, uh, nodes. And then we'll just grab the, um, it, it'll just grab the, uh, what's it called? Um, it will grab the each each of the surfaces and then like set the shader parameter of the fov to what we want so that's why um we can uh the view model fov thing works and then uh so that's basically that it's that simple you could also put you could also use this as like an import script to create another material like a sibling material that is um the that's the uh that's the augmented shader with the, the 
view model shader it put into it. Um, but I don't know how to make scripts or auto import scripts. And so this kind of just works for now because it also doesn't clutter up the, the file system. So that's uh, how you make uh, a TF2 style or Source Engine style or literally any other game style rendering the weapon models on top of everything else. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. Um, the, hang on, there's something else I think I wanted to say. Uh, um, oh, SVG, it's one. So if you get super close to something, and I'm talking super, 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 super close, it will clip like so. But it, if you play, if you launch Team Fortress 2 and use a no clip and try to get this close to a wall, you will also get this same issue. Um, so I don't feel bad about that. And also you have to be so unimaginably close that this is just never going to happen. Like, I am literally, like, inside the wall right now. Anyway. So that's that. Uh, I hope this was useful, and I hope this saved you countless hours of pain that I had to go through. And... Alright, sorry. I... Alright, uh, close the video. Bye.